as many do, many, many of the children of the Lord receive a piece of the cloak. I believe we all do by merits of our baptism. That is, there is a prophetic dimension uh, in the lives of all, all baptized souls who, who follow Christ totally. Discernment is always needed regarding dreams and visions if they are going to affect our life choices. The mind's imagination, um, a scene from the life of Christ from the unknown years, the hidden years as they are called, of Nazareth, the hidden years of Nazareth as they are called. And uh, so intensely real was it, so surprising and not how I imagined those years were. It was simply a little meeting between uh, an adolescent John the Baptist and an adolescent Christ, his cousin, and discussing the nature of love, but not in a non-verbal, non-rational form, although concepts were being exchanged. Uh, I know my imagination, I know how it works, I know when it works, and I know that, that at that moment, it was the least likely moment that my imagination would be operative. Uh, all I wanted to do was sleep. The angels play crucial roles in both the Old and New Testaments. Uh, my wife and I feel that on three occasions we have uh, experienced encounters with angels in human form. It's one very extraordinary experience for me when I was a young man. Uh, three, I say. And we're talking about tens of thousands of days in an ordinary life and only three little encounters, brief encounters. So, they are real, they are persons, angelic persons. They uh, look like nothing we can imagine. They don't look like anything, they are pure spirits. However, God has ordained that they can, on occasion, act in human affairs in human form. Uh, one thinks of the uh, angel Raphael assisting Tobias in the Old Testament, or the angels uh, liberating the apostles from prison. I was often in interior state of struggle against discouragement. Everything was working against the true health of my family. I couldn't make enough to feed them. The church was not supporting and was in grave disorder. The nation, the state, was becoming more and more anti-family, etc., etc. So one day, uh, one night, we said our family prayers and uh, we went to we went to bed. The children were asleep. My wife and I said our night prayers. Then she fell asleep. But I could not sleep. I was so consumed with worry on every level. I really a state of anguish. 
and I fell asleep eventually. And at three o'clock in the morning, I looked at the clock. I awoke suddenly wide awake, sitting up in bed. Now this does not happen to me. When I fall asleep, I'm in a coma, always. Uh, so, it, uh, it was absolutely unprecedented that I would be totally wide awake. It takes me about a half an hour to wake up in the morning, uh, even when my body is upright, even with coffee. Michael is not here entirely. So, but this night, uh, I was suddenly totally wide awake, sitting up in bed, and I heard a voice. Um, and the voice, interiorly, but very powerful and with a kind of authority said, a gentle but very strong authority said, the Lord wishes to speak to your heart. Uh, so, it was so beyond my normal imaginative life, uh, this, this voice. Uh, I, I felt it was God speaking or maybe my guardian angel. So I went down, downstairs to our living room and I turned on the light and uh, there came with that voice the instruction, open the scriptures, sacred scriptures. The Lord wishes to speak to your heart. So I prayed to the Holy Spirit, if you wish to speak a word to me, Lord, uh, please speak through your sacred scriptures. Uh, I'm sorry, I must backtrack. The last thought I had had before I fell asleep five hours earlier was, oh God, how am I going to bring my children through these times? How am I going to bring them assist them to come to heaven. It's impossible. Everything is impossible. Everything is failure. I'm finished. So I fell asleep and then I woke up at three in the morning, went downstairs, opened scripture. I closed my eyes because I didn't know what I would, God wanted to say to me. Uh, I opened the scripture and it was uh, a, a scene uh, in the New Testament in the Acts of the Apostles where an angel releases, is it Paul or Peter, I can't remember. Um, one of the apostles is released miraculously from prison. Oh, well, that's significant, I thought that's a good word. And I was going to go close the scriptures and go back to bed. Okay, God, God will help you. I thought that's what he was saying. Opened. I was going to go back to bed and then there came this interior spiritual prompting, no, no, open and read. So I opened it again. There's another passage in the New Testament where an angel rescues one of the apostles from an impossible situation. I opened again. Uh, angelic, an angel rescues people in the Old Testament. In a, I forget which book. Maybe it was maybe it was the book of Tobit. From impossible situations, I kept opening it at random, not knowing what I would find. Every single passage I opened to, there were five in total. All of them were angels rescuing servants of God, children of God, in absolutely impossible situations where there was no hope of rescue. So, in terms of apocalypse, in terms of even uh, any kind of uh, persecution of the church. It's my belief that, that God is saying, at least he was saying to me about my family, this is how I will rescue you, that you cannot save yourself. 
You will not be able to, through any kind of human faculty, rescue yourself from the malice of the evil one when it is poured out in totality against all those who follow Jesus in this world. But I will supply help in those times uh, as it is needed.